Are they going to store it? They're storing them for you too? Oh, that was nice. Oh, oh, very nice. Very nice. They're going to be taller than her by the time. Is there anybody here from the Gore family, the Gore family, to bring up the gifts?
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we have, before we begin Mass today, we just have a special announcement. Good morning. We held a town hall last Monday. Many of you were here, many of you weren't, and I'd like to provide a summary of that town hall. We're speaking at each of the masses this weekend. The volunteers of the Finance and Ministry Planning Council want to increase transparency and attempt to address the issues of importance for our community. There is a report to the community on both the exit doors. Please be sure to pick it up and review it before you leave. There is also a recording of the town hall on the uh, UB Newman website and uh, the UB Newman Facebook page. In essence, we talked about the fact that our community is vital and the engagement from everyone here continues to live out the Newman promise of all are welcome. Our four weekend masses are well attended and additional weekday services are available. We've had 31 new parishioners registered this year, 100 children baptized, and 196 children in faith formation. Thanks to Ann McGurk and, and 185 volunteers, our chicken barbecue served over 1,200 people and raised over $52,000. Campus ministry is reaching more students with increased attendance at Sunday Mass Newman nights and Wednesday night dinners. There are also changes happening diocesan wide with the road to renewal and they've brought some changes to how we here at the UB Newman Center operate. We are now part of the campus ministry family with St. Joseph's University Parish and the Buffalo State Newman Center and we share a single pastor, Father Dan Serbicki. He said mass here last weekend. We are and always have been a Newman Center, which is specially designated by church law, and the diocese has clarified we are not a secondary worship site. Our financial and business operations no longer are part of a, the, diocese, the diocese. We are now part of St. Joseph's University Parish. All of our revenue and our parishioner uh, community roles and our sacramental roles are segregated and restricted to support our ministry. The UB Newman Center is not assessed and does not pay an assessment to the diocese because of our role of campus ministry because that is the role we play for the diocese. All, right. All donations to the Newman Center support only UB Newman ministry. Good. <laughs> Your great support helped close our deficit with the diocese. Thank you all very, very much. And we begin our new financial operations without any debt. The report contains a summary of the Newman Center budget and shows that two-thirds of our revenue goes to pay our staff. We do need to raise our weekly donations by about 20% to reach the revenue goal that's uh, in the budget and allow all our ministries to continue at the level we want them to. If you've not been giving or suspended your donations due to concerns about funds being used for the diocese bankruptcy, the new structure ensures that that is not the case. We're also asking you to consider online donations to provide a predictable revenue stream for the center. Funds are needed now and used to pay our monthly bills. Many, many people at the town hall talked about expanding our community by personally inviting new members to come experience UB Newman. Please consider how you can provide even more support through helping us grow, increasing your financial support, establishing regular online donations, and considering one or more of the volunteer opportunities listed in the volunteer sheet that accompanies the report that's out in either lobby. God bless our Newman community. Thank you very Amen. much. As we begin our celebration, please stand and join in singing hymn number 572, The King of Glory, number 572. The King of Glory comes 
So we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, the peace of Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. In the gospel today, we hear that Jesus came to testify to the truth. So now it's time for us to be truthful. In these moments of silence, let us be honest as we humble ourselves and truthfully let the Lord know what we are sorry for in our lives what's in our hearts towards certain people, what's on our minds, our attitudes, our relationships, our activities that really are not truthfully that of God. And so let us be honest and let us confess and be forgiven. Lord Jesus, we know that we never have to hesitate to come to you and ask, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and then bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-loving God, whose will is to restore everything in your beloved Son, who is the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery to sin, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> May the Lord be with all of you. Let us now listen carefully to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the people. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Ah, then you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. And everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yuri Smolensky was a Jewish engineer in the old Russian Soviet Union. And one day he received the order to then have to go to the outer regions of Siberia for an assignment there. Well, when his parents heard about it, they were literally brought to tears, that he was going to be so desolated out there, you know, where nobody was around, what was going to happen to him, you know, was it a trick, are they going to do something to him, and they just were beside themselves. And so as he was packing, he said, now don't worry, I'll write to you every time I have an opportunity. And his father said, but you know what, they're going to censor those letters, so you've got to be careful what you say in those letters or something worse could happen to you. And so he said, but I have an idea, son. Whatever you write that's the truth, write it with black ink. Whatever is just a lie, write that in red ink. Oh, great idea. So a couple of months went by, and then Yuri finally sent this rather long letter to his parents, and they opened it up and it said, oh, mom and dad, I couldn't be happier here. And it was all written in black. He said, they treat me like a king. He said, the butcher brings fresh meat every day. He said, we can go to see movies and concerts for free. And you know what? I haven't heard any anti-Semitism while I've been here. Be happy for me. Love, Yuri. P.S. They don't sell red ink here. <laughs> So 
So how do you tell the truth? <laughs> how cautiously do you have to be to be able to express that which is true? Because let's face it, sometimes we try to be truthful for, with a spouse, with parents, children, friends, whatever, parishioners, the diocese. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But the fact is there are ways to be able to tell the truth. You know, we can be very blunt, very hurtful, insensitive, or speaking the truth, we can also do it compassionately, with openness, with understanding. And I say that because of the gospel today. When Jesus said, I came to testify to the truth, and also that whoever belongs to the truth hears my voice. How truthful are we? When we don't speak the truth, things build up inside, don't they? <laughs> you know, it sort of eats away inside of us. I wish I could tell that, you know what, you know, how I really feel here at work. You know, or I wish I could tell my husband what's really going on inside of my mind right now or my heart because of, you know, what he's doing. The truth. We have to speak the truth if you want to be that which is of Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I can remember when I was in the seminary, I was home for an Easter vacation, and I walked into the house. My father was sitting over there. My mother was sitting way over there at the other end of the living room. You could cut the air with a knife, as they say. I had never seen them argue. In all my years, and at that point it was like 23, I had never heard them have a disagreement, you know, go to bed mad or, you know, in front of us do anything like that. And it was like, what happened? Well, after all those many, many years of keeping stuff built up because they didn't want to, you know, worry the children if they saw mom and dad arguing, you know, are they going to get a divorce? You know, what's going to happen? Are we going to be, you know, separated? And so we try to be protective and kept everything in within. Finally, all hell broke loose. I wanted a garden 41 years ago on that side of the house, and you wanted it on that side of the house. When our son, not me, but my brother, <laughs> Dale was in trouble, <laughs> they said, well, sure, you wanted to go to the school and address the problem. I just thought that we should just let it be, let him see if it grows out of it. But all this stuff that just boils up inside, the truth not being spoken, causing problems, hidden problems that sometimes just can't be hidden any longer, and then all hell does break loose. What's going on in your lives? I'm accountable for mine, and how truthful am I? And sometimes I have to be careful. Because how do I say to somebody, oh, are you calling again? <laughs> you know, because I know that that conversation is going to be about 45 minutes long, three times a week. And it's like, oh, so nice to hear from you again. <laughs> what do you say? What don't you say? How truthful. But it is so necessary. We have to be able to learn how to do that, how to communicate. I know I was with the marriage encounter for a number of years and helping to give weekends. And that was the big thing, of course, about communication. Let somebody know how you're feeling about something. Doesn't mean that feeling is right or wrong, it's just a feeling that you have. You know, it's raining outside. And you know, she says, oh, I was gonna go out and do some gardening today, now I can't do it. And he says, well, it's good for me because I'm going to go out and do some fishing today and the rain's going to help out. Was one right and one wrong? No. So, but you express your feelings. Let them be known to each other and sometimes they'll be understood and sometimes not. But we have to be ministers to the truth. The old saying, children speak the truth <laughs> and sometimes whether you want them to or not. Beautiful story I heard one time. And it was this uh, grandmother who took her five-year-old granddaughter to see Cinderella. And Cinderella was such a beautiful movie for this little five-year-old. And so she came home, and she wanted to be like the fairy godmother, okay? So she got her pinwheel and made that the magic wand. And she said, Grandma, make three wishes. Whatever you wish, I'm going to grant for you. 
And so grandma said, well, I would really like world peace right now. There's so many wars going on. World peace right now. And the girl goes, boom, it's done. And so the grandma said, okay, number two, I want all sick children to no longer have cancer, no longer have any illness. And right now, here at this time, to get them out of the hospitals, get them back home so they can be healthy again. And so the little girl goes, boom, and it's done, Grandma. And then Grandma, who was, well, a little overweight, decided to use the third wish, and she said, well, really, I would like to be a little trimmer. And so the girl goes, da-da, da Da-da, 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 da-da. This may take a while, Grandma. <laughs> we can tell truth and be humorous. We can tell truth and bring tears. But we are all asked to be truthful people. Let's face it. When we talk about Christ the King and his kingdom, not to mention any names, but sometimes there are certain politicians who get to the point of forming their kingdom. And when they form their kingdom, they let the people know who they're not going to allow in their kingdom and kick them out and get rid of them. And those kingdoms very often are based on lies. Lie after lie. Fake news after fake news. Lie after lie after lie. And we buy into it. We allow it. We accept it. What is that kingdom like compared to the kingdom of Christ? That has nothing to do with the kingdom of Christ. When you're basing your life, your marriage, your job, your parenthood, your politics, governor, president, whatever, when you base it on lies, watch out, because that's not of Christ. So let us all remember what it means to be part of his kingdom to be a truth-filled and truthful person, that will make the world what it's supposed to be. Not a kingdom, a marriage, a job, based on lies. Amen. Thank you, my fellow Democrats. (laughs) Let us stand in prayer. Lord Jesus, we are grateful for the systems of education that we have all had since maybe kindergarten, high school, college, graduate work, master's degrees, whatever it may be. But for those teachers, those men and those women who try to share truth with us to make us a better human being and to make it a better world, Grateful for those professors, those teachers, and even the parents that we have that taught us right from wrong. In gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you continue to help those who are struggling right now, especially the homeless, as the weather gets worse and it's going to get even more so. For those who have to find a home on the streets or in an empty building, for those who have no one to fight for them or speak up for them. Lord, somehow with our prayers, your love, agencies in the church or in the government, in the neighborhoods, give them shelter, give them help, give them something to want to see another day. We pray to the Lord. And any other prayers that some of you may have, please let us know loudly enough so we can hear it and then make it our prayer as well. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Special intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And a special prayer for Kathy and Vince Wood, who celebrate their 64th wedding anniversary today. May God continue to bless them with their love for each other and his love for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord and so, Lord, whether it's the prayers that we have spoken aloud or the prayers that are really deep within us, you know what they are, and you will always respond to them as only you can. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 524, Alleluia number one, number 524 in your books. <laughs> As we give thanks to the Lord for all the blessings in our lives, let us pray now that what we give to the Lord in bread, wine, our very lives, everything we give will be found acceptable. May the Lord accept it. Lord, we offer you these gifts by which the human race is reconciled to you. We humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. This we pray in the name of Jesus who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation always, everywhere, whatever the circumstances may be, to give you praise and glory, most loving God, especially in Christ Jesus. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord and brother Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness. He is the King of all creation. And so that, by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us eternal peace, he might then accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to him. Then he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and peace, a kingdom of justice, love, and grace. And that is why we now join together as members of that kingdom and proclaim with one another and the angels and saints these words of praise. You 
are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the source, the font of all holiness. Therefore make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed by a friend, nonetheless he entered willingly into his passion. And so he took some bread, he gave you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then in a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal kingdom which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And therefore, as we do celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. And we thank you for counting each and every one of us worthy to be here in your presence this morning and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the very body and blood of Christ, then we will be gathered more intimately as one in the Holy Spirit. Remember us, Lord, but your people throughout the world as well. Continue to use Francis, our Pope, Mike, our Bishop, the women and the men who are leaders of all religions and churches and denominations. May they continue to be your instruments of justice, of peace, love, and harmony for a world you created for everyone, not just for us. Now we ask that you would remember our relatives and our friends, those who through death have fallen asleep in the hope of their own personal resurrection, all who have died touched by your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence, and we remember in a special way at this Mass, Robert Gore. Finally, we ask that you would have mercy on all of us, so that along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with her spouse Joseph, with the apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we in this day and age also lead lives pleasing to you and merit to be co-heirs with the saints to eternal life. And then we will praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now using the words that were so important to Christ and just as important to us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sin primarily, but much more importantly upon our faith, so we could share peace and unity here with one another now, 
with others later today, and then one day with you in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord's peace and his joy be with all of you. And now let us share those gifts with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all of us now called to join in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the altar for communion, please join in singing hymn number 945, I Am the Bread of Life, number 945 in your books.
few announcements. <laughs> well, it's only one page. I think last week it was like two pages. Anyway. Our homeless ministry meets this Monday. The Newman Center is closed Thursday and Friday. Please join us for Mass on Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, at 9 a.m. We have three ongoing donation drives. For Our Lady of Hope Parish, we have a giving tree and are also collecting Christmas bags of fun. The Homeless Ministry is collecting $10 Tim cards and Christmas cookies. Lastly, we are again collecting period products for the Confident Girl Mentoring Program. Thank you to everyone who has brought in stockings for the students. We need at least 250 stockings returned by December 1st. Our Lonergan Lecture Series returns on Tuesday, December 3rd. The lecture, Daring to Hope, the Problem of Hell and the Promise of Universalism, will be at 6 p.m. at the Newman Center. For our students, there is no Wednesday night dinner this week. Our last dinner of the semester is December 4th. There is no Newman night this week. Our next Newman night is December 5th. <laughs> Good morning. Um, just in regards to the Tim cards for their homeless friends, that is the most wanted gift by our homeless friends is a Tim Hortons card. So we are collecting $10 cards. We, we, are, we will distribute them on December 11th, so we need them by December 8th. We need 150 of them. We also need 150 bags of cookies. There are some bags outside that you can fill with the cookies. And if anyone wants to stay after Mass on December 8th to help us put the Tim cards with the cookies, it would be very grateful. Thank you. I have a short note uh, from our Kairos Prison Ministry. They wanted to thank everyone here at the Newman Center for all of your generosity in providing for the women that they served at the Kairos Retreat. They took care of 28 incarcerated women at the Albion Prison, uh, and then through prayer and sharing, they said they were able to provide faith, hope, and love during their weekend with them. Uh, again, from both Connie and Carolyn, thank you to all of you who made that happen. Thank you, Father Roy. The Split Club, alive and well. There are forms that were sent out to over 1,400 registered members of the Newman Center. If you didn't get one in the mail, you're not registered. Please see me after Mass. I have additional enrollment forms. We have four monthly drawings every month through May. We'll have an early bird special in December. Reminder, all of the money stays at the Newman Center. Last year, we returned over $25,000 to the Newman Center. There is a report to the community as a result of last Monday's meeting. Both of these are at, uh, all of these are at each entrance. Please take one up. It's very informative. Sheds a lot of light on the viability that we are alive and well here at the Newman Center. Thank you, Father Roy. You're welcome. And one last thing. Just, again, a thank you. Talking about prison ministry. For those of you who have donated the calendars, the Christmas cards, and the allocation cards for the inmates at Attica. I know there's quite a few out here in the hallway that I'll be taking with me. Sister Roz, who is the chaplain at Attica, is picking them up a week from tomorrow. So if you still have some that you want to drop off, uh, haven't had a chance, if you could do it during this week, Friday at the latest, so I can get them together for her on Monday. But again, thank you for your generosity and concern, for as Christ said, when I was in prison, you visited me. Let us pray. Lord, having received the food of immortality, we ask that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, then we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. May God bless us and many through us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is under now. Let us go in the peace and the joy of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As we conclude our celebration, please join in singing hymn number 949. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 949. Heart the 
God bless you. Okay. Enthusiastic. I know. <laughs>